All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to remove film from uh, Soviet rangefinders once you've come to the end of the roll. So first and foremost, how do we know if we're at the end of the roll? Well, if you set your frame counter properly when you loaded your film, then you can look at the frame counter and you should know uh, that you're approximately at the end of the roll. For example, this frame counter is set at 35 and I don't remember if I advanced a frame after I took the last shot, so it may be at 36. Um, in fact, you know what? I did not advance the last, the last frame. You know how I can tell that? So on these old Soviet rangefinders, the shutter speed dial rotates. It spins uh, when you release the shutter. So after you release the shutter, the shutter speed dial is not going to indicate the correct shutter speed. There's the index mark. The index mark, it's not even pointing at a shutter speed. It's pointing at some space between 50 and 100. Um, and I happen to recall that, um, that the last shot I took on this, I was using a shutter speed of 250. So um, what I would expect is that if I advance the, um, the film, the shutter speed dial should rotate back around to 250. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, well, if it does, that means uh, I've, got a new, uh, I've got a fresh frame. Uh, which I'm going to waste just for demonstration purposes. Uh, but if it doesn't make it all the way back around to 250, then that means that, that, was, that the film was not advanced properly, that I should not take any additional exposure, otherwise I'd be exposing one frame on top of another because there wouldn't be enough space between the frames. Um, and well, let's see. So let's advance. And let's take a look and see. Is there? And ta-da. All right, so yeah. So it looks like I'm going to waste a frame. Um, so that was a full rotation and the index mark is now indicating 250 which will end the, the advance has stopped. Um, uh, so let's try another one. There we go. And well son of a gun looks like I'm going to waste two frames on this thing. Uh, it is foma pan and foma pan sometimes gives you a little extra film like one or two more frames than say Ilford or Kodak. Uh, so I, I release it again, turn, and okay, now it's not advancing all the way. Now the advanced knob halts right here and it's not going back around to 250. Um, so now I know that I should not take an additional exposure because the frame has, the, the, the film has not advanced all the way and I would be double exposing the last uh, frame if I did that. All right, so what now? So now I need to disengage the take-up spool. So what happens is the, you, you loaded the film, you put the cartridge over here on this side, um, you took the film leader and inserted it into the take-up spool over here. And as you advance the film, the film moves from the cartridge to the take-up spool. So right now, all the film is over here on this side uh, and if I open the back of the camera, I will expose all of it and ruin every photograph I took. So don't do that. Uh, we need to get the film from the take-up spool back into the canister. And in order to do that, we need to disengage the take-up spool because the take-up spool has a mechanism which prevents it from, <coughs> excuse me, which prevents it from um, um, rotating backwards uh, in order to, to, to keep the film over here. Um, well, in order to put the film back in the cartridge, we need to disengage that function. And um, on the SLRs from the 1970s, that's usually done with a button on the bottom of the camera. Well, on these old rangefinders, that is typically done through some control feature um, around the uh, shutter release button. Uh, there's a collar around the shutter release button, and that's what you use to disengage the take-up spool. And here on the Russian camera, we see that there is a collar, it's knurled, and we've got uh, this little arrow uh, going between two Cyrillic letters. And this, I guess, is an index mark, or serves as an index mark, um, which is indicating the Cyrillic letter, which I suppose stands for advance or forward, as opposed to this Cyrillic letter, which must stand for, you know, re release or rewind or something like that. Um, so we need to disengage this function. And on the Fed, I think you push down on it, if I recall correctly. Yes, you push down and twist I said you push down and twist oh wait a minute hold on a second clockwise interesting okay so um, I did push down and I twisted clockwise so apparently 
there's really no index mark. Um, all right, so there's no index mark indicating whether this one letter or the other. I guess that's why the arrows are here, um, because I just twisted clockwise. So I'm guessing that this letter must indicate reverse and this letter must indicate advance, because I just twisted it in this direction. Um, so that should release the take-up spool. All right, so the take-up spool has been disengaged. Now I need to get the film from this side of the camera, um, from the take-up spool, into the uh, cartridge. And on these old range finders with knob rewind, what you do is you lift this knob here. This is the rewind knob. Lift that, lift that up like so. <clears throat> it doesn't require much force. You just lift that up like so. And you turn it. And you're going to keep turning it until um, you hear the, or you hear and feel the, um, the film disengage here. In fact, why don't I take my lapel microphone and set it a little closer here. So hopefully you can, um, you can hear what, what sound that makes. because of my position here. Let me see if I can get my hand around this way. Oh man, excuse me. No, that doesn't help. Just keep doing that. is not quite so awkward when you're not doing it in front of it with a tripod between you and the camera. Right. And here we go. All right, I can feel that now. There we go. There. Now this thing is turning completely freely with no resistance whatsoever. And so now I know that the, um, the film leader um, has been released from the take-up spool, has been retracted into the cartridge. We can put this back down, like so. Okay. All right, now what? Now that the film has been completely rewound into the cartridge, you can open up the camera, which you do with these two keys at the bottom. You twist like so. And remove the back. Okay, and here is the fully rewound roll of film pan. And what we did was, when we pressed this down and turned it, we disengaged this so that it will move backward. Ordinarily, well actually no, I think we disengaged this. This is the mechanism which stops it. So we disengaged this thing so that it would free it up to move backwards. Um, and then when we were rewinding as I when I pull this up you notice that pulling this up doesn't change the position of these forks it just lets you grab this thing a little bit easier and then these forks turn around and they had engaged these something you know, I don't know how well you can see that on the video but in, inside the cartridge is a um, our, um, our matching pieces where those forks would grab to um, to turn the film and pull it back in. Um, all right, now we're going to put the back back and turn that like so, and voila. Now you should remember to uh, replace the um, the position of the uh, the advance and and rewind mechanism because next time when you go to load a, load, when you go to load a roll of film and you try to advance one frame, 
if this is released, then this, this just won't stop advancing. It'll just keep going, 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 and it won't, it won't um, naturally come to a stop. So what we're going to do is so push down and counterclockwise. Yeah. Okay. So push down and counterclockwise, and now the um, this collar is raised, and it is now in the position to should. Here we go. Check that out. There. Now it's back to 250, where I'd set it before. There. Now it's functioning normally. Okay. Um, and when I release it, push this down and clockwise, and the when it's in the release position, this collar is lower. And I'm, again, I'm going to push it down and counterclockwise. Now it's higher. That's in the advanced position. Okay, and ready to be loaded with fresh film. Okay. All right, very good. So that's the Fed 2. Let's go to the Zorky 4. I've got a roll of film in that as well. Same procedure. Uh, what I'm going to do is first, let's see if, the, uh, if there's an extra shot on the, on the roll. Again, this is indicating a shutter speed of right now 1 15th, and I'm, I'm certain that I did not shoot the last frame on 1 15th. So, again, put it up, see if it's released. Let's see if we can advance this around to, and it's showing a shutter speed of 500, and I, I may have shot on 500, so it appears that that is a, that's a fresh frame. I could take a photograph if I wanted to, but you know, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to waste the frame. All right. And, aha, all right, that is, that's it. This is as far as it goes. So that is exactly one frame at the end. I mean, this thing will not budge. All right. Excellent. Uh, so I, and it's indicating 35, which, in, which suggests that, well, maybe I didn't set the, well, I don't know. Um, the, the frame counter. Um, when you we are when you are loading film in these old rangefinders, do remember that the film counter um, does not have an automatic reset feature like the SLRs from the 1970s. Uh, they do need to be set manually, but in, in this case, just by putting your thumb on top of it and pressing and turning um, in order to get it back to zero when you load a fresh roll of film. Okay, so. Um, um, at the last roll of film, I want to disengage the, um, the take-up spool, so I'm going to push down and rotate. What am I going to do on the Zorky? All right, clockwise. Push down and rotate clockwise. Is that right? I don't know. See, there are no markings, so it's kind of hard to tell. All right, so push. I, I did push down. I did rotate clockwise. It appears that the collar around the shutter speed. Uh, excuse me, around the um, release lever, rather, is in, a, is in a lower position. So, let's pull up on the rewind um, uh, knob and start rewinding. Yep. All right, so it is released. It is, in fact, released, and the film is proceeding into the... And again, let me I'll tell you what. Put the microphone down at the table so you can get a sense for what this sounds like when you're doing it. All right, that's it. That is now spinning freely, no resistance. The film's out. Okay. And now, so now the film is rewound back into the uh, canister, and I can open up the back of the camera, twisting this key like so, and this key like so. Remove the back of the camera. Now, um, a word of caution for if you own a, uh, an old Soviet rangefinder, the take-up spools in these cameras are removable. You can take them out. Um, and that does facilitate loading. It makes loading a little bit easier. 
but remember that these cameras are completely useless without a tape without a take-up spool um, on this particular one this is a Zorky 4 uh, this is a plastic take-up spool it's very light um, and it's really not there's nothing it's not a whole lot of friction holding it in place it's just kind of loose and dangly um, that's a little dangerous if you're changing film in the field because if you lose that take-up spool you know good luck finding a replacement part without this spool without this tiny little plastic part right here this entire camera is worthless um, it is no longer a camera it is nostalgic art um, so don't lose the take-up spool be careful when you if you are changing film in the field be very mindful of not dropping that take-up spool all right so uh, again last thing I'm going to do is put the um, the collar back in the position to advance and that's going to be a, a counterclockwise turn <clears throat> now on the Zorky 4 I turn the collar counterclockwise but sometimes the shutter release button, and I've done a separate video on this issue, this, this was giving me some trouble at some point. The shutter release button also is knurled and needs to be turned clockwise. So there. So the shutter release button is, I think that's right, is up. Yeah. Yeah, the collar needs to be turned counterclockwise and the shutter release button needs to be turned clockwise. Um, otherwise, it will not function properly, and I've done a separate video on that. Now, <clears throat> I can feel the it's engaging the, um, um, the shutter release mechanism. Boom, there you go. So it is now, this camera is now ready to reload um, and um, with a fresh roll of film. Um, do not store your camera with a cocked shutter. You notice that I, just to see, just to make sure that the, um, um, the advanced release mechanism is in the advanced position, I advanced. There's no film in here, but what I've done is I've cocked the shutter. Um, do not leave your camera stored with a cocked shutter because that, that shutter is cocked and there are springs uh, um, and me mechanisms in here that are under pressure and under tension when that shutter is cocked. So you want to check to make sure that your, your advance um, um, indicator or your advance uh, rewind um, function is back on the advance setting it's a good idea to, to go ahead and, and cock the shutter to make sure that it's working properly. Uh, but then release it and do not store your camera even overnight um, with a cocked shutter. Okay, so that is, um, that's that. And that is, um, that's how you remove your film from your Soviet rangefinder. I hope you found this useful and informative. If so, please do like and subscribe and check out the links below. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.